said we call him Mickey. He talked to the cops. He's a rat, Karen. He's saying he's a rat. All right, let's go. <laughs> hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Out Tales podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co host, Karen. I was chewing some gum. I took it out because. I'm a Negro, so yeah, I let's be professional. I yeah, I, I would be all in your ears. So I yeah. was being really considered. I almost forgot I had it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like your hair. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I uh, need to uh, uh, wash it, but I uh, took it out and just kind of did like the puffs. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot longer than I thought. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's all poofy everywhere. Yeah, looks great. Um. The official weapon of the show is the taser, an unofficial sport, bullet ball. and bullet ball extreme. Um, you know what it is, y'all. We're just doing these down and dirty shows, doing them late night. It's holiday season, mm -hmm. so you kind of just get what you get. We go with the flow. We talk about what we want to talk about because nobody can tell us what to do. Okay, mm -hmm. it's our show, mm -hmm. and 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 yeah, we don't have a boss, so we are our own bosses. So we're just talking today. Um. I guess uh, the best thing to do is get into the news, um, and we can do that by just getting into just some regular ass news. Um, let's start with some regular news music. How about that? talk about this regular ass news <laughs> um all right so what's going on um a mother of a new york city heiress paid a d programmer big bucks after her daughter was quote unquote brainwashed uh by a college's woke agenda what yes Yes, you heard me correctly. Um, I think this may have an article on it. Let me see if I can play this article. A bombshell report on the University of Florida's College of Medicine. It shows the school incorporates critical. Oh, wait, actually, no. This is a Fox News thing saying, talking about how woke news is, da, 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 is, is woke agendas in the colleges are fucking up the kids. Okay, so the article is. This New York City pharmaceutical heiress Annabelle Rockwell is claiming that her mother paid three hundred dollars a day to a D programmer after believing her daughter had been brainwashed by attending an all-female elite liberal college that left the young woman totally indoctrinated and estranged from the parents who raised her. What? That means she got out away from y'all, learned some shit, and was like, "Oh, y'all fucked up." How come what parents do to kids don't count as indoctrination? Right. Uh, I left school very anxious, very nervous, very depressed, and sad. Rockwell told the 29, uh, told, uh, I guess, the New York Post, she's 29 now. Mm -hmm. I saw everything through the lens of oppression, bias, and victimhood. I came to the school as someone who saw everyone equally. I left looking for injustice wherever I could and automatically assuming that all white men were sexist. My thoughts were no longer my own. Um, I find this so interesting in that... Um, well, it seems like they're spending this for some type of media thing. I don't know what they could be selling or whatever, but it, the story is so neat and clean of just, I was a good girl. Then I went to college and the woke liberal indoctrination made me think Black Lives Matter. And thank God my mom was able to deprogram me. I don't know if it's an ad for the deprogrammer or what. Um, but the idea of like, my thoughts were no longer my own. So you started seeing things outside of the conservative lens of your parents. Yes. And that was such a big threat that they paid somebody to get you back on program. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is one of the reasons I don't do the kids are our future shit. Because the kids grow up and the kids need the parents. And these are the parents. And the same way a lot of kids stay home till they're 25 these days, stay on their parents' insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids can't afford to truly be independent of their parents' like leanings when it comes to uh you know politics they can't afford to be out here in the world being like nah fuck what my parents saying i'm voting for democrats and i'm pro lgbtq they can't afford it their parents not with that shit and you still want to be in their good graces or you need the money or the room and board guess what you're gonna be either quiet or sounding like this woman 
Uh, Rockwell, a former competitive figure skater, skater, grew up in Upper East Side, uh, told the Post that at first she she was elated to attend Mount Holyoke College, a sixty thousand dollar a year women's institution in rural Massachusetts in two thousand eleven. Now, why would you think you were going to attend that kind of school and not get some level of uh, liberalism? It's a women's school for number one, unless it's like religious women's where where it's right. like. We're doing uh, this because this is in the curriculum, we are yeah. 100% religious. No, you're going to be open to any and everything. Yeah, she did not participate in the Moho Chop and Internet uh, initiation ritual meant to shrug off gender roles by cutting one's hair. Uh, by her junior year, however, she told the post she knows a shift in herself after taking a gender study class. This professor tells me about patriarchy, I barely knew what, what the word meant. I didn't know what she was talking about. I wasn't someone that into feminism. I just knew that I felt I had always been free to do what I wanted. I never experienced sexism. But I was told there's the patriarchy and you don't even understand. It's been working against you your whole life. You've been oppressed and you didn't even know it. Right. Now you have to fight it. And I just went down this deep rabbit hole. Because you didn't want to face the reality of what the people were telling you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible to be affected by by like the group think and the group peer pressure that comes with um any group dynamic whether you agree or disagree with the group but what i think is funny is the reason i think it sounds like a product she's not even talking about like i got on twitter or something she's talking about 2011 i was just at a college and the college indoctrinated me and it's and the colleges are such a big boogeyman for the right wing media. yeah yeah they're on strip education because they feel yeah. like the because the studies have shown <clears throat> that uh you need a dumb workforce and i'm not not and I'm, not, I'm not saying that to insult workers because i'm a worker too but you need your workforce dumbed down right because when your workforce is dumbed down guess what they'll deal with low wages guess what they'll deal with abuse and here it is at the end Rockwell, who now fundraises for the conservative advocacy group Prager U, said her intention is not to smear other class names. Da, da, da. So, yeah, it's just promotion of like, listen, if you start to care about anything other than white men, <laughs> you are part of the problem and you need to be re educated. <laughs> good grief. White people really be putting this shit in the news. Like, this is good. This is a good story. Everybody should learn from this. Yeah, because this is similar to other white people. Hey, parents, you know, don't don't fear if your child goes out and all of a sudden start telling you that you're flawed and the things that you tell them are wrong and shit like that. It, basically, you're promoting the program. Here's a program to quote unquote deprogram them. Right. Um, yeah, and I still don't see where the like deprogrammer truly comes in. Like, I'm looking to see. Okay, so her mother uh, said that uh she threw a vase in the window in anger of what her daughter come in a kid in addition to the costly d programmer she also enlisted the help from her daughter's tennis coach scott williams but was warned it might take seven years before annabella would revert to her old ways of thinking this is scary as shit man i can't imagine the pressure of being some little white kid that is even starting to have an inkling of like yeah maybe my parents full of shit maybe some of the stuff they believe in is actually wrong going against uh -huh. what they claim to believe in when you think about it and then motherfuckers like we brought a deep programmer in yeah because the worst thing that could ever happen is you realize that all the sh things we've been showing you is bullshit because i can't speak for nobody else but i can't speak for myself for most people, whenever you leave your house, like you actually are become an adult adult where you can mm -hmm. pay your own bills, you'll start to process how you were raised. It's just naturally. Yeah. And no parent is perfect. So you'll actually start analyzing things and you'll be like, well, I like this and I didn't like this. And you start forming your own opinion and you'd be like, well, you know, maybe that was some bullshit or I still like this. And, you know, that's a part of sprouting out and, and becoming an adult but some parents they can't handle that because for some people they fear if you go out here and you start being around black people being around uh, uh latino people hispanic people being around asian people like actually interacting with people outside of your race all of a sudden you'll start having compassion you'll start understanding you'll start seeing them you'll start standing up for them all of a sudden you won't get along just to just just to get along you'll start be like hey this don't feel right something and and they the last thing they want you to do is fucking rock the system yeah and it's also just not 
just college, right? Like you said, it's leaving the house. Yes. Seeing other ways of life, seeing other opinions. I think of kids that are raised like super religious, super conservative, super restrictive, not just white kids. Um, I mean, just any kid. Mm -hmm. And we always had that joke of they get to college and they're the ones who wow out the hardest when they're freshmen. Cause it's yes. like, I have never been under the, I've never even got to be under my own influence. It's all been my parents' influence. And so boom here we go i'm 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 out here wilding for life i'm 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 drinking to the point of blacking out every weekend mm -hmm. i'm doing all the drugs i'm trying to have all the sex mm -hmm. um and i think that's um they don't have boundaries and, and they don't know their own limits because they they never really was raised where they could test them in a safe environment and you have your parents there as kind of a buffer it's like oh my gosh i can do what i want to do and you just wild out i think also just on another level this is a big thing I think about when it comes to like, why do white women vote conservative? Because mm -hmm. people always think they're voting against their self-interest. People always say stuff like, oh, you can't trust them. They'll betray you and all this stuff. And I'm like, is it a really, is it really a betrayal if they weren't on your side really? Correct. Because what voting the liberal voting progressive really means for a lot of white people and, and white women is going against your family structure going against your value system you were instilled with to do the opposite and they want to belong to that unit you know the woman is the key to the unit and the power of a unit and so i think the idea that her parents are willing to spend thousands of dollars to get and and thinking it would be a seven-year process to get her to stop being considerate of other people that were not white men considerate of other people is the 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 the, the, uh, the wherewithal and the money that they and effort they put into that white women are never going to be free like for right. real like the right. way that right. she even said like i was free if you were free then why did you have to come back to home and have be like imagine someone that had to be quote unquote deprogrammed talking about freedom that's crazy you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's also <laughs> Uh, one of those things too to where um once like I say once they got outside of her house they start experiencing these other things you go against the system she was the person sound like they were so naive they didn't know what sexism was why because they don't talk about that the man just rules and you just do what the fuck he says you fuck when he wants you cook you clean whatever it takes these are the things that you do you don't question right. you don't speak up you don't have no autonomy uh over your own body or any of that stuff, you know, you are quote unquote his property. And so when you start talking about sexism and the reality of this shit has always been impacting you for the for the fact that, you know, and even in the Bible, for the fact that the quote unquote man runs the household, that's a motherfucking problem. Bitch, we a duo. Mm -hmm. We both run this household. And you know, and, and, and people try to use the Bible to, to make women subservient when you know that's not the purpose of it. You know, people misquote things when they be like, you know, a wife submit to your husband, but it also say husband submit to your wife as Christ of the church. That's what it also says, too. But you know, people don't want to hear that part because that would mean that the man would have to do an action, and how dare a man have to do an action, you know, for his quote unquote woman, his property, something he owns. Um, in other news. This is some local Charlotte news, a uh, nightmare about shipping. Um, I just thought this is an interesting story. Uh, Lucy McDermott, the owner of Stash Charlotte, says she was. Oh, and let me know if there's any issue with the volume or the sound, guys, because you never know with this thing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Charged more than $1,300 to ship a package that should have cost her 50 bucks or less. Wow. With the holidays approach. Yes. $1,300 for a package that should have cost her $50 or less. What happened? A lot of us are going to be shipping presents to friends and family. WPTV's Caroline Hicks on your side, digging for answers and finding out what you can do if this sort of thing happens to you. I own a yarn fabric and sewing machine store in Charlotte. Lucy McDermott ships inventory frequently, but what happened this time was unexpected. I had received a trunk show from um, a fabric company that contained a couple of quilts, some dresses, nothing heavy. It had been to, I think, two or three other shops prior to mine, and I was sending it on to the next store. She thought she did everything right before dropping this box off at her local UPS store to ship it just down the road to Gastonia. I measured it. For those that don't know, Ken, how far is Gastonia from Charlotte? That's right up the street. 
Yeah, it's like literally less than 20, 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah, max. Sent it on its way, and I thought everything was fine. It got there just fine. Fine until it wasn't. Then a week later, I received an email that said, hey, your shipment was overweight and oversized. And so we've charged you an additional $1,321. And I thought, okay, <laughs> this right. is a mistake, right? This is where McDermott says things got complicated. Right. First, I contacted UPS, but they wouldn't talk to me because I went through a secondary shipper called uh, Pirate Ship for the postage. Now, she bought the name of the secondary shipment is Pirate Ship. I mean, I'm not saying it's your fault or that you blame the victim, but Pirate Ship. This seemed like how a pirate would work, like. <laughs> the pirates is back. They're yeah. not only on the seven seas no more. Yeah, like this seemed like what how pirating works. Like I got your I got your cargo made it, you know, I got me booty or whatever. It just seemed like it sounds like a lot of people probably use third party shipping like this. I don't know. I don't I honestly don't know. I've okay. never I've never used a shipping company I had not heard of and had it work. Ah. Like it's like I've the only ones I've used are like you know, the ones that you know, DHL, uh, UPS, UPS USPS, FedEx, you know, yeah. FedEx. Uh, I've, I've never, it, like, honestly, if I saw an option on a website that said you can use Pirate Ship and save X amount of dollars, I'll be like, no, nah, thank you. No, thank you. Right, me too. No, thank and you. And it could be that I'm fucking up, that it's a local business that could use the help and they deliver the package. I still would be like, I'm good. I don't trust it. Because... I, 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 I'm nervous or scared that something like this will happen, and what am I going to do? The shipping label through that company, Pirate Ship, for a discounted rate. So I contacted Pirate Ship, filed a dispute, submitted all the documentation, pictures, and a week after that, I got an email that said, your dispute has been denied. She, she tried to speak with... with like, look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now someone in the company but all she got were automated responses <laughs> sorry as imagine. a bot i couldn't find that answer for you nigga for thirteen hundred dollars i will come where you are and fucking find you for my money dog what what i will be at the office's first fucking thing in the morning oh Fuck my god that. did they even have a physical office i bet it's in nigeria okay i'm sorry nigerians but come on actually y'all be kind of proud of this so somewhere Raphael is like yes uh nfts <laughs> And I'm absolutely livid. And that's when I contacted you. And I also contacted my credit card company. Coincidentally, that was when I heard from Pirate Ship again, telling me that UPS has graciously waived this fee, but you need to be more cautious in future because they won't hey, do this uh, again. This what? Is, this is what I love about credit cards. I hate about banks. Because credit card company, you be like, these niggas stole my money. I tried to resolve it. I want my motherfucking money. Credit cards be like, we got you. Yeah, here's your money back. And guess what? We going to investigate. Right. Yeah, when the credit card company get the call and everybody get the actual like they got motherfucking sense. Yeah, credit card company don't just do you like... uh your bank. Like, like your bank is on some like you show us fraud. I mean, it, it's like, no. Credit card, like something didn't happen, they ain't deliver. It's your money back. God, I love credit card companies closer to uh banks did you ever get an understanding of how this happened no no one explained to me what had happened <laughs> so i reached out to pirate ship to get answers a spokesperson telling me somehow the machines saw the package as being larger than the carrier's maximum limits which at that point very expensive penalties somehow are it saw it as being but was it or not right and what and how much bigger did it think it was thirteen hundred dollars i think it was a fucking car like that's crazy. Right. Blame the machine. Kiss my ass. Oh, this was scared the shit out of me. Right. And I guarantee you there's some shit they do all the time and 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 shit like that. And they go back and forth and people just say fucking it, they just pay. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Somebody gotta get hurt. First of all, who the fuck got thirteen hundred extra dollars? Who just got it sitting around like, oh, okay, they they got me for thirteen hundred, but you know, I like not lost ninety six bricks, had to fall back. I'll be all right. With the Better Business Bureau says it's a lesson we should okay, all learn. Other shit. I don't care about this. But yeah, I was like, what a nightmare. Pirate ship. What were the other shipping companies she didn't go? Shady shippers. 
<laughs> black market shippers. Right. <laughs> and so basically, do you telling me what we've been doing? Just go straight to the because I guarantee you, you went straight to UPS. UPS would have handled that. And I bet you guess what? They machines wouldn't have mistakenly oversized your package and you yeah. showed them the paperwork. Yeah, first of all, that's ghetto as fuck that it would even do that, you know. Right. It's programmed to do that. Trust. Yeah, they have a website, Pirate Ship, ship packages with Pirate Ship. Number one choice for small businesses and entrepreneurs, no monthly fees, markup, or hidden costs. I think $1,300 is pretty hidden as a cost. <clears throat> like, you be better mm -mm. off paying the fees. I, I guess some, I guess UPS Fed must have like monthly fees to give you like a discount or if you join a membership or something. Well, no, they just say that it's it you can save up to 15% compared to what it costs to go to the USPS. But I like the USPS is one of the few things in America that actually runs oh, well and costs less than it should. I don't even yes. know. Like if you honestly, if your business need to get 15% below USPS, it might not, business might not be the thing you need to be in. Mm -mm. Cause good grief. All right. All right. Um, uh, Balenciaga, the fashion line, uh, sued uh, their own ad campaign people. Uh, they filed a $25 million suit over a controversial ad amid BDSM teddy bear backlash. Good God. Um, yeah, uh, it filed a lawsuit against the producers of a controversial ad campaign that included a child pornography court ruling amid backlash over the luxury brand's BDSM teddy bear ads. Uh, the fashion house brought the suit Friday against production company North Six Inc. and set designer Nicholas Dez Jardins and Who his thought that was a good idea. BDSM for kids and his eponymous uh, company for the inclusion in one of the ads of legal documents from the U.S. Supreme Court decision on child porn laws. The fashion brand ad also showed unsettling pictures of a child holding teddy bears dressed in bondage outfits and ads that came out around the same time. The two page court summons doesn't mention the BDSM teddy bears, um, but they are trying to seek redress for extensive damages defendants calls in connection with an advertising campaign Balenciaga hired them to produce. Now, I'm guessing that at some point it has to be approved by you or else how does it get into a magazine or an advertising spot? Like someone at Balenciaga said yes to what y'all got back. And so, I mean, unless they just completely went rogue and the, the ad campaign you knew yep. nothing about oh, it and right, it, without right. approval it just y'all approve one thing and then they did something else yeah, yeah. trust it's some emails some paperwork got signed like they're gonna be like well such such approve this <clears throat> like god we don't understand y'all yeah. should just told us no yeah so they said five million dollars of course they're gonna fight this right um what do you mean 25 million dollars of course they're gonna fight a, lo this. a lawsuit like like the people that did the bdsm they're gonna be like well y'all approved this like, oh, I see well, I haven't heard their oh. side of it yet. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, they, but Balenciaga is saying, you know, this is what happened. Now I'm looking at the pictures and the thing is, I don't, look, I'm not a pedophile. I don't know how pedophilia works, to be honest, y'all. But it's like a little kid holding the bear. I mean, it's like, it's apparently it's, it's not bad enough. They can't put it in this unless there's some other images they aren't showing. Oh, look like the look like it's in like a little harness thing. Yeah, like the the bear has like a spike collar and all this shit. I mean, it just it looks to me it's more that it looks stupid. Then I'm like, oh my god, this is so sexual. Like it, the kids don't even look like they know what the fuck the bear is or they any don't. of that shit. You know they it's, don't. You know, it's oblivious. Yeah, these are smaller children. For those of you that can't see it. Yeah, I like I I don't like I'm not saying no one should be offended, but I don't find it like if I saw this picture without knowing this article, I wouldn't be like, my God, they are trying to make child porn. I'd be like, that's stupid. <laughs> I'd be like, that's inappropriate. <laughs> what is this? Like, what are you even selling? Are you selling the bear? Are you selling like what the fuck? And who like who is a BDSM teddy bear for? Like, I don't I don't know what I don't know fashion. I don't know what this is about, but. Yeah, it just seemed more stupid than anything else. And it seemed like someone other than me would have thought it was stupid before putting it in a fucking advertising thing. Mm -hmm. But it sounds to me, because like Kim Kardashian had a statement about it and how it was disgusting as a mother of children. And she's reevaluating her relationship with them as a, as a fashion brand. Like, so it's pretty big, 
pretty big deal yeah. for her to even say something because you would think that with them suing their own advertising unit or what you could just be like well it look like they handle it uh they ain't got nothing to do with me but even she's like nah this is too far so i guess we'll find out yeah we'll we'll, we'll see kind of what happens but yeah with businesses for most businesses that's too many checks and balances uh, you know unless you went through and then they had some extra shit or went went rogue or some shit that you was like the fuck is this i could see it being a problem with that but he has too many checks and balances and it crossed too many people's desks before yeah you know because that's too much money it crossed too many people's desk before it hit hit the airways who was the person that thought this was hot fire until the... some, somebody thought it was flames who was the person that thought this was hot fire until the fucking pushback because that's what happened Somebody was in the office like, yes, this is it. This is what we want. This is what we need. And then <laughs> and then somebody was like, uh, have you seen Twitter? We're trending. Not the good way. Not in a good way. <laughs> Over Elon Musk. Uh, all right. Um, Tinder users say situa- situationship is a valid relationship status. What that mean? um is that a, it's a complicated what's that situations yep is when you're not da- quite dating someone but you're not just sleeping with them either if it sounds murky it's because it is young singles are down for the vagueness however as long as it's clearly defined In in an in-app survey among tinder users ages 18 to 24 the uk us and australia done last month one in 10 respondents said they prefer situationships as a way to develop a relationship with less pressure the app saw it's, a it's not a full-fledged commitment. The app saw a 49% jump in members adding situationship to their profiles from January to October this year. Yeah, they let you know up front not looking for a relationship, like you know, casual if it turned into something cool, but you know, don't expect to get basically a hundred percent of me. I think uh also these like the kids now, especially since the internet, uh, I think they like labels. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as they kind of don't want to be defined by anything, they want to define everything. Um, I mean, you you know, I, I, we saw the start of this when it was like Facebook has 37 different genders and people were like, well, you know, our generation is scoffing at it. But I mean, you go fast forward a few years and like everybody got some different shit, you know, oh, I'm a sapiosexual. Or I'm a this. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, stuff that we think didn't need a label. You know, that we're like, oh, yeah, okay, I, that's sure it's got a label now. Yeah, so, right. I think situationship as a romantic, you know, term for whatever tryst or entanglement you're in, that kind of makes sense that they be into that. You know, I think also coming out of the pandemic, you probably got a lot uh, uh, uptick in all this shit too, because now that people got choices, they can go outside, it might be getting a little complicated. That's why, I, that's why <laughs> I asked, was it it's the complicated that that'll simplify that. Yeah, um, yeah, young singles are down to play the field this year, Tinder wrote in the release, but they opted for a high quality roster where everyone was on the same page. Yeah, it, I think if this symbolizes communication, I think that's healthy because I mean, what's more hurtful? Rejection is always hurt, hurtful, but I think when people don't even, you know, what's that number one question? What are we, you know, mm-hmm. when you can't even like define what the fuck this is and it's like are we seeing other people are we not am i am i tripping if i stop seeing other people and i what like whatever that situation is what is that you know and i guess if you're um if you're also looking at it economically a lot of times people don't have the money to really do relationships relationships Mm, i don't think yeah i don't think a lot of people had the money to do dating the way that we grew up thinking dating was Mm -mm. um uh, we're still in denial about it because if you mm-hmm. listen to people talk about dating more even more even even more rigid than their like cis head monogamous framing the most to me the most like dogmatic framing is people having money the assumption is that you have the money to go do traditional dating to go out to restaurants spend the money on that or entertainment or whatever and some people do but i think less and less people do right and the idea of going dutch paying for yourself or someone outside of the traditional being the whoever just has the most money i think those things are interesting 
I think situationship sounds like something maybe you could say, oh, it's not just us going out on dates. It's us hanging out at each other's houses or something. Something that doesn't, you know, cost as much. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if some of it was was by that. And almost nobody talks about economics when it comes to relationship. Everyone just talks about romance and love and gender roles. But after I read that book, uh, uh, fuck, uh, it's uh, something poor. Uh, um, I'll, I'll look it up in a second. But um, after I read that this book about, I think it's called Poorly, some, I, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Anyway, mm -hmm. after I read this book, a lot of the stuff about the myths of poverty, poorly misunderstood, I think is what it's called, or poorly understood. But um, some of the myths of po poorly understood, yeah, that's what it's called. Some of the myths about poverty, like if you get married, you're less likely to be poor. And that's why we need to promote marriage in lower income families. And then that or that or that. And then, but it, I mean, it's correlated in that statistically if you look at it it it's you can actually fa factually prove married people are more likely to have the stable household household more income blah 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 what they never talk about is that's also because people that have money are more likely to get married like correct you already have the money so your life was more stable than a person that never had the money in the first fucking place so it's not just marriage as a status immediately puts you in another tax bracket. It's people in another tax bracket have the luxury of, oh, I think I want to get married. I can afford a wedding. I can afford a house. I can afford to have kids. Yes. And the thing is, you know, when people talk about marriage, people from every financial background get married. Right. And so you have the working poor, which also get married. And a lot of times, guess what? They still the working poor. It doesn't right. bump them out of a tax bracket. You know, and even some people listen to that on my voice had parents that worked, both of their parents worked, and they still struggled and were barely making it. Or they, or, or they are the parents that are like, I'm barely making it. So people say that, and you might get a little bump, but, you know, like you say, if you are financially stable, yes, that statistic is true. Yeah. Um. So I think that's a big part of it. Keep in mind also the survey is from 18 to 25. So if you're single and you're 40, listen to our show, 35, whatever, this may not sound cool for you. And that's fine because they're probably just talking about younger people Correct. and the trends of that. Um, also, they, they in their mind, it takes the pressure off of it, which, which is interesting because to them, no pressure means it can build towards a relationship, which is so interesting, right? Because I know for a lot of us coming up it was if you do not have a goal if you do not have some pressure you ain't never gonna get the relationship right and here they are these younger kids being like no if we don't put pressure on ourselves maybe we'll a, a relationship will develop without us having a specific goal in mind right because my generation be like bitch don't waste my time <laughs> like you know i'm saying like i have shit to do i could be fucking somebody else why am i wasting my time with you if you know and a lot of that is patriarchy which puts a lot of that pressure you know to do those things to be like hey is we is is we gonna do something or nah because i could be doing something else with my time my time is precious to me mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just interesting. I think that's mm -hmm. it sounds like it's more about vibes or having a good time than necessarily building towards something. And I right. wonder if that's a cycle too. Like as they get older, will they then feel the pressure? Because I wonder if you gave us a survey from 18 to 24, most of us would have been like, Yeah, I'm cool with whatever. Right. And then young. once you get to like to that age where there's peer pressure and family pressure to like be moving towards some type of goal, I wonder if that's when people go. No, situationship ain't going to cut it for me. Either you, like, like are you going to meet my kids or are you not going to meet my kids? Like, we need to figure this out early and often, you know? Right, and and then it puts the pressure back on. And it's one of those things where, you know, I understand, but a lot, a lot of that don't fit for everybody. It's personality-wise. Right. Some people, they can vibe their way all the way through motherfucking life. And some people, they go, that shit ain't for me. Yeah. Uh, why most men don't have enough close friends. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, less than half of men report being satisfied with their friendships, and only one in five said they had received emotional support from a friend in the last week. Mm. Comparing that to four in 10 women, 
according to a 2021 survey from the Center on American Life. This falling off of friendships between men begins around middle and late adolescence and grows starker in adulthood, said Judy Yi Chung Chu, who teaches a class on boys' psychological development at Stanford University in California. And those who do maintain friendships with other men say they tend to have lower levels of emotional intimacy than women who report. Boys don't start emotionally connecting. They become emotionally disconnected. Uh, yeah, they become emotionally disconnected. Say so Dr. Naomi Way, a researcher and a professor of applied psycholo uh, psychology at New York University. Um, which is interesting coming off of that study we talked about yesterday where people get lonelier in the pandemic and loneliness leading to the, uh, higher rates of depression for people that are, you know, like single or isolated during the pandemic. Yes, I I disconnected then again it's not because mm -hmm. a lot of this is society how how do we raise young men mm -hmm. like particularly straight young men like how do we raise them you know we raise young women to socialize we raise them to get to be friends we raise them to be emotional we raise them we throw babies baby dolls in their hands something to take care of we don't do boys like that i think also like the labor of friendship and relationships is something that is instilled in women and girls from an early age that and is reinforced throughout your entire lifetime mm -hmm. whereas for men the labor of the friendship isn't necessarily considered it's not saying you shouldn't be friends right. or that you're not there for your friends or something but like the friendship being something that can take work be work you get better at something that you know you strive for and and maintain i think is that's definitely not something that has been instilled in me from the perspective of men need to do that like what kind of like when someone talks about the value of a man i think a lot of times friendship and caring for others is not near the top of what makes a man valuable to people right right and 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 it's also this is just like i said i'm not a man but me on the outside you know, looking in as being a, a woman is just one of those things where they're not taught that. And a lot of men uh, are uh, emotionally stunted and they've never really been challenged to kind of think outside of themselves. Women are actually think outside of yourself, care, 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 care to the detriment of your life, care, put everybody and everyone and everything before you. A man, he isn't trained to put everybody and everything before himself. I think also, though, there's this thing of men are often, it's, it's seen as weak to want things emotionally. So, for example, <clears throat> everyone's experienced this. You ask a man something like, what do they want for their birthday or Father's Day or Christmas or something? And like, a vast a big amount of men will either say nothing <clears throat> or they have no idea or they haven't thought about it or the the worst one to me is to be left alone you know or whatever um in a way that we would never accept that from the matriarchs the women in our lives right if if your if your wife says if you say what do you want for your birthday and they go to be left alone yeah, it's like what's wrong is it you know like we're supposed to make a fuss over you we need to make you feel wanted you know even if you'll see even times where like fathers the men in the house take on that role for that day like y'all listen y'all be quiet we're gonna go in we're gonna go to this restaurant y'all <laughs> y'all better thank y'all mama y'all better tell y'all mama thank you right and so there's like there's like that's even supposed to be part of being a man mm -hmm. is is that that idea of like and you make sure that woman Cause if you ain't doing that, then da da da, you know. But I, it's kind of interesting to think like, I think a lot of times men cut themselves off. I don't mm -hmm. think they're cut off. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think it's just they walk in the house and women go shut the fuck up. Where's the money? I think they cut themselves off because for whatever reason, like emotionally, I'm not supposed to make a big deal out of myself or whatever. And I think that's that could be part of it too. Um, and then they don't get that so meaning that they're not going to get that from their families because they're cutting it off before their family can even get involved, you know? Um, so then when it comes to like your friendships, I think the time, the things that a lot of men commiserate over is, is this like perceived misery, you know, this, 
the old ball and chain. My kids getting on my nerves, my job, you know, whatever. And it's not really necessarily, um, it's not really like giving you a chance to be supportive, you know, as a friend. It's, it's just more like, oh, women, right? You know, <laughs> like it's not, a, it's not like a, hey, man, I'm going through this thing and I was feeling this, that, you know, I know. I, as you know, being raised how uh, I was, how I, I was raised and then being around the people I was, you know, other men, black, black boys, black men, it can be weird when you start having conversations that are emotional, that aren't emotional based on just anger. Right. Um, no, we're not or being comedy, funny. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think those conversations sound weird to people if you've never experienced it. Um, and I, this isn't just a black thing, by the way. I mean, even while I used to go to the bar with my white friends, like once a week, it's all just sports, the weather, jobs, it, traffic. It's, it's nothing in depth or deep. But sometimes I have conversations with like Justin or something, and it's about like anxiety, or you know, we hang out with a friend and he's talking about, you know, I'm in therapy and this is what's going on with my family, this is what's going on with my my brother and this that, and the other, and we sit there and we just talk like. No one's trying to like joke it away. No one's trying to be right. like it needs to be normalized. But it, it takes practice, is my point. Mm -hmm. I was not raised like that. Um, and I, I don't think I was raised in some type of emotionally uh I, I actually think I was lucky to be raised in the house I was with the father I had, as far as when it comes to like emotions and stuff. But uh, but definitely my experience has been one where you're the oddball if you do engage on something deeper than just you know bitches and and basketball or whatever the fuck you know yeah they think something's wrong with you and also it's one of the reasons why uh if women might be talking or a group of women might be talking and we might be getting emotional or talking about things because this thing women talk about a rat range of things and we'll talk cry continue to talk laugh like we have like you can go through a whole circle with women and mm -hmm. everybody hug each other all right girl see you next week and we'll be fine but if you ever seen like women talking and a man walk in the room it's like it's like emotions and they they panic they want to crack jokes like and sometimes that could be annoying because i was like bitch don't nobody ask you to come in here and fuck up the move go on where you come from yeah i think it you know i think it takes uh practice to be in that mode i think a lot of times humor and anger are like this shield that men are taught we can put up mm -hmm. to keep us from you know the creamy caramel nougat inside you know it's like no we gotta have this tough outer shell of uh of just like rock you know rock solid dark chocolate you know mm -hmm. i'm saying we're toberons guys i'm saying <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, it uh something else i've realized too and i know i said this before uh I've realized that for a lot of men, a lot of men that I've been around, the older they get, the more they tap into their emotions, the more they're open, the more they are, they're not, a lot of them are not as angry, you know, particularly if, if they've done work on themselves, a lot of them will tell their friends that they love them. A lot of them will hug their friends and they ain't, ain't just a motherfucking dap, you know, and shit like that. But it's, in my opinion, in my, I'm like, it's sad that you got to wait till you get old well, before you get to that point in your life. I think, you know, talking in gen very general terms like mm -hmm. we are, I think it works both ways. The same way that it takes a long time for women to stop needing all the approval and support and being like, Agreed. I'm going to lean into myself. Like, whatever you're programmed with, um, young is what you're going to be undoing. Mm -hmm. And seeing the benefits outside of that, hopefully, the rest of your life, you know, like, um, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, oh, I don't need other people's approval or, or codependency. Like, I, it's a deep, you know, I, lo I love nothing more than when, uh, uh, you know, I have fr friends that are women. I love when women hit that age where they be like, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm fat or I should be married or, you don't like what, like, fuck it. Like, I'm grown. I pay my own bills. It's nothing for you, nothing you can do for me. Uh, like, uh, maybe I'll stop coming to, coming to this place if you keep talking to me like that. Like, yeah, I got choices. I know women that took them, it took them decades to, to be able to do that work mm -hmm. internally to be able to be like, I don't give a fuck. Of course, as a man, we're, con we're conditioned the other way. 
we're told to not give a fuck in times when we really should, you know, right. when you should be seeking connection, when you should be talking to somebody, when you should care about when something is bothering you and you're pretending that it's not. And it, and so, as you said, men get older and then all of a sudden they come into like, Oh shit, I, I am fucked up about this. I, this does bother me and I haven't been talking about it. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it is just, patriarchy man the way we're taught to engage with each other right because a lot of this isn't just men don't experience these things it's mm -hmm. am i allowed to share this thing and if i do am i gonna be ridiculed am i gonna be right uh kicked out of the group am i gonna be made fun of if i'm gonna be isolated right so let me just pretend everything's fine when i when it's really not correct and it's also one of those things too to where a lot of men use their wife as the emotional support that they actually need to lean and depend on other men for. Possibly. I not, think, not all, but some do. And so then, this is what I was going to say though, real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, In a marriage, people are going to be each other's emotional support. Oh, yes. I think it becomes an issue when you're the sole emotional support. That's what I mean. Um, and that's what a lot of men do is mm -hmm. that like it's because i think there's nothing wrong with being supportive of each other mm -hmm. emotionally y'all should be so, but it's it's then when it's like i'm leaning on you as my only outlet right it can be a lot because it's like you should talk to other people out because the other thing too you gotta be careful with is you might not want a man leaning on other men depending on the topic because some niggas some of my is not giving good advice you know, oh, like, I is. hope that they have a good, Terrible. honest friend circle. And it takes a while to build that because it does. For me, I know uh, being outspokenly the way I am, that's been helpful for me to build real relationships. So I, I'm never going to be a person that has a lot of friends. I don't believe in that. Me either. Um, but I am a person that has, to me, the friendships I have, I feel like are more deeper than the most people's average friendship. Mm -hmm. And the thing I will say is leaning on people or talking to people emotionally, whatever that circle of trust that you build, um, it has to still be authentic because I think what happens is a lot of men have surface level friendships that they quote unquote lean on. And to me, I've seen that become so destructive. Mm -hmm. I still remember playing basketball at my work league and most of the people on, at my job at the time that played in the basketball team were black dudes. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a way for the, you know, handful of black dudes at our company to hang out, play basketball together. And, you know, you get to know them. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, it leads to like, oh, you know, I'm having a cookout, man. Why don't you come over? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And this was a year where I was out of school and you still were in school. It was your senior year. Mm -hmm. And I remember playing basketball with these men and, you know, men that I kind of, you know, you, you quote unquote, look up to them in the fact that they're older, they're married, they got their houses, they got good jobs, they work in the place you work, they, they normally have better, you know, higher positions than you. So it's like something to aspire to. So it's kind of like, okay, cool. Some brothers I play ball with two times a week or whatever. And I, at the time I was playing basketball every night anyway mm -hmm. so what's what's another night to play with the team you know right and so i really enjoyed playing ball with them we, it started spawning off into other stuff like oh we uh go play ball at a different gym we'd uh go and uh go go to someone would have a cookout at the house and we'd all go to that or something you know they'd invite you to something and um i remember going to a couple of those things and, and meeting their family and their kids and then I remember one day I was playing ball and there's sometimes there's like people that come in and watch us play ball and stuff. If somebody's wife and their kids will come in or something, but there was a couple of times there'd just be like girls sitting there watching us. And I'm just like, all right, I don't know who they with. Maybe they like basketball. They right. like rec league basketball this much. Maybe they're super fans. Who gives a fuck? Right. It's not my business. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't have called any of these people my friends, even though I would have said, you know, coworker, colleague, mm -hmm. we cool. So I remember one time I was there and this girl was there. Um, and, and and the girls always be dressed a bit provocatively for a fucking rec league game with a bunch of 40-year-old married men and shit. And so 
I remember because right, there's no gym or anything around. Yeah, this okay. isn't like you going to a sit sideline of the NBA game. Exactly right. You're sitting on some bleachers in the middle of the fucking Charlotte Rec League uh, basketball course. And so um, I remember this one time this woman was sitting there and I was thinking one like, oh, she might be my age because I think I was only like 21, 22. And these guys are mostly like 35 and older with kids and families. And so this guy is like, oh, shit, man. Hey, <clears throat> talking to another player. Hey, man, your wife is here, man. Your wife is here. And he's like, oh, shit. Oh no, man. She yeah, she about to pull up, man. Oh, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? So they come over to me as the 21 year old single guy whose uh fiance is still three hours away at Fayetteville. Um, so they come up to me, a guy who's gone to their fucking family barbecue and shit. No, they kids. <clears throat> and they rod. <clears throat> My wife come in. If she asks you about that the girl in the stands, you just say she with you. And I said, I said, one, I said, no, I'm not. Listen, judge me how you will. I don't measure my friendships and relationships this way. I'm not the homeboy that, to, to help you cheat. I'm just no. not that guy. Mm -mm. I'm never going to be that guy. Hold it on you. Mm -mm. It's low key offensive to me that you thought I was that guy. Right. I wouldn't. Do I, I would, look like I'm that person? I would never ask you to do some shit like that. Correct. And you just need a different type of friend and you just need to know your friends better. I just ain't that dude. I'm a square. Leave me out of it um but yeah so he asked me that and i said no and, which is you know interesting because i'm 21 and this person's 30 something and they looking at me like they disappointed i'm looking at them like i'm disappointed i'm like nigga i thought y'all was fucking happy family men and shit you niggas is out here helping trying to help this nigga cheat and they can't say because the families all know each other you can't say it's one of them Cause it's like, oh, she, you know, my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, oh, that's because y'all don't been all over each other's houses and shit. Yeah, and so I'm like, well, then if she's coming up here with your kids and asking about people in the stands, she already think you cheat. Correct. Why would she even ask me that shit? And maybe they told her that was my girlfriend or some shit, or maybe they didn't. I don't know. I never got involved in it, mm -hmm. but I still remember like the kind of disappointment I felt. Like, mm -hmm. huh? Like that's. That's who what y'all about. That's what y'all own. And the way that everyone got in formation, what it makes me think back mm, to my whole point of okay. when it's like lean on other men, a lot of times you can't go to another man for some mature shit because niggas be on fuck shit a lot of times. Yeah, they do. And unless you oh unless you stand 10 times 10 toes down, and now nah, this is what I'm about, you know, the way that I typically do then sometimes dudes will be real with you but it's yeah, a lot but you have to show of, them that i'm 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 like yeah don't don't come be with no <clears> bullshit dog it's a lot mm -hmm. of work that really isn't worth it unless you really are that way i've had so many real conversations with dudes my whole life but it's almost a hundred percent because of the how they see me like right, they see they me see as you relationship guy they see me as guy that doesn't mind looking soft in love they see me as right. guy that uh <laughs> doesn't cheat they like here's the he's the weirdo let's go talk to him yeah like <laughs> but but they'll but it's interesting because they'll be that way with me and they wouldn't be that way with another dude you see what i'm saying like mm. like it's just you know i've had so many relationship talks with men that i by the way Talks I'm not seeking out. Right. I, I, I have, you don't prompt them. Yeah. They I just have friends. To I'm, I'm good not talking to this. I don't know you like that. A lot of people have a lot of deep conversation just randomly with you. Because the other mm -hmm. thing is I'm pretty not judgmental. So like Correct. if you are on some cheating shit or whatever, I don't, I'm never going to like give you a speech mm -hmm. or try to like wake you up. I'm just like, apparently that's how he get down. We're not friends anyway. Peace. You know, like it's not my mm -hmm. business and Whatever comes of that is what will come of that. So, like, it's never me seeking it out, but I've had so many conversations with people that are like, it's almost like I can not be full of shit around you or right. you're not encouraging me to, you're not measuring me by things that other people would consider, like, toxic, quote, unquote. Right. So now you're I can not talk to you. are judging me, right. Yeah. And so I think it's interesting that... um you know, anyway, so when I hear about a lack of friends, I think about like what is your friendship measured by and how deep is it in the first place? Because if your homeboy comes to you with, you know, something 
serious and not as something that be be vulnerable are you prepared all uh, right are you for real like, or are you on some you know and for some people it's an age thing like they were prepared now but at 25 they would have said man let's go get some bitches let's go out to the club right. you know fuck that right. shit. when you actually need to talk to them about their heart being broken or whatever right. else they're going through right they sometimes they just need that emotional support and i know i'm i'm talking a lot here monopolizing it i don't mean to be mm -hmm. but the other thing i would add too is there's a shit ton of anger resentment entitlement very dangerous emotions in the average man and you don't have to look any fucking further than the statistics of violence in america matt whether it be mass shooting domestic violence interpersonal violence whether it be you know just like men have a violence problem because we have an emotion problem and when you can't express can that your emotions you can't live in all facets of your emotions when you can't be vulnerable you turn into something you turn like we know the formula and we know where it ends and it, it normally ends with things aggression and violence and, and acting out and it's terrible to see people not even be able to find themselves until they're somewhere locked up in a cage before they have to really do some internal reflection about where and why they are that way and the programming is so reinforced when it comes to that shit is almost impossible to even communicate with people i've i've i remember i've talked to people before where you just you're talking to a man and as they're talking i'm realizing like oh you're kind of incel you don't know you're incel right like you don't know that you 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 would never think of yourself that way but just the entitlement you feel, the obsession you feel about okay. sex and women and and the, the 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 anger you have towards them, that is not normal or okay. It may be normal at this point, but it's not okay. Right. And it's going to stop you from um, ever really being able to truly accept and love yourself because you're so obsessed with measuring yourself in the ability to for conquest and stuff not even by the way not even love and romance a lot of times people take it easy on the incels and make it seem like they just are so frustrated the lack of romance but it's not only just sex if you listen mm -hmm. to the how just they sex. talk it's like well if i was a drug sex. dealer you know it's like well, if you was a drug dealer you'd be a, probably a drug dealer not getting no sex you kind of a a, a whack nigga. right and, and 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 the thing is <laughs> And this is on the out, like I said, I'm on the outside looking in. A lot of I watch anime, bitches don't even want to fuck me. It's like, well, you might just be a whack ass nigga that loves anime. It's yeah. like sometimes it could just be you. Yeah, and they I act think like they act like women can't pick up on you being whack. Yeah, I think so. Earlier when you talked about men getting older and stuff, I think getting older allows you to do some of that introspection if mm -hmm. you're inclined to. And I think the opposite for women, and you know, we're very generally very cis head. Right. Y'all right. get y'all know what we're talking about. Right um but the opposite is for women where women get it takes a while for them to get older and start being like it is about me you know what i'm saying like like yeah. like i mean not it is about me but but yeah it isn't about me in that a lot of the shit people are heaping on me ain't got it's not personal it acts they right. they don't know what the fuck they talking about mm -hmm. they just see a vagina or a woman or and this they start with a bunch of stereotypes and and advice and shit i didn't ask for and a lot of pressure that i don't need mm -hmm. and then as they get older they're like it's about me and for me i the value i put in myself what how do i feel how does this make me feel why should any how it, the shit makes why should how it makes other people feel be the big denominator on what i do i think that's what happens for women and for men it goes from me, 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 selfish to getting older and being like, I need other people. How I make other people feel is important. How I communicate with them, how how I'm there for them, how they're there for me. I think it's just we're yeah. you're just it's like watching two opposite things curve the opposite way. Right, because that's kind of how you've been trained. And I know for a and even for myself, the older you get, that is true, particularly being a a a, a straight woman. Uh, uh, cause that's the only perspective I have. So for me, you do get to the point where you be like, I don't give a fuck and I actually don't care. And no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not going there. No, I'm not doing that function. I don't give a fuck what y'all doing. 
you know, the older you get, you're more, you're more, you're quicker to say, kiss my ass. And people don't respond well to that for women. It's like women get like, like men get praised for that and women get penalized for that. Right. You know, it's like, mm, I'm taking control over my life and I'm telling you what I am and, and, and am not going to do. And all of a sudden I'm the problem. And that's where you have to go to the, I, I don't care phase in your life. And from talking to older women, a lot of them said that they didn't actually get there till they got into like their forties. Mm-hmm. For a lot of women, they said about forties to fifties. They say right around in there. They said that's a lot of older women said that's a sweet spot where you've lived long enough and you've experienced life long enough that you kind of know who you are and what you will and won't put up with. And that's why for some uh, men, they quote unquote have issues with older women because the older women be like, bitch, I'm not doing that. No, I no, no, kiss my ass. I'm not doing that. I'm I, I'm setting my ways, and, and it becomes like a tussle because a lot of men, like you said, they still into that patriarchy, and a lot of women is like, fuck you in that patriarchy. And they've done studies, and we've read them here that say, like, uh uh when people get older, men want to get married, and women are like, fuck a marriage. Yeah, because men looking for a caretaker in many cases, but yeah, I, I just so I don't find it. Um, I think that study is kind of um, just revealing in some things that we already kind of knew exist. And then the last part of it talks about how to build friendships um, and how to. It says you know you got to start small. You don't necessarily have to reveal all your vulnerabilities to everybody. You don't have to have a lot of friendships. You got to respect each different friendship and protocol with it and different people's boundaries and stuff but i think the biggest thing is you have to admit that you need and want other people correct and um and then the other thing i would add that's not in here is that to me it you gotta be reciprocal meaning yes you can't want friends and not want to be a friend i think agreed i think there's a lot of people that see friendships and relationships very transactional now um and especially now that so much of our worth can be measured in follower count and retweets and vir- virality and shit, I think a lot of people need to look at what is the true value of a friendship for them and what is the fr- true value of um, being a friend. What is the cost and the labor you want to put into that? Because I think it's fine to say, I'm going to have three friends and that's probably going to be it. And it's fine to say, I'm going to have 10 friends, but whatever you decide, you know, like, the idea of like being doing that work or um or how f- figuring out those boundaries for yourself is so important because i mean i think we've all every person's had friendship heartbreak mm-hmm. friendship j- we always talk about romantic mismatches but friendship mismatches somebody somebody's friendship style is i need to call you every day and your friendship style is hey uh text me and i'll talk to you every blue moon if we need to like mm-hmm. Uh, some people is we got to go to lunch every week some people is you know uh i'll see you when i'm in your town but i'm not gonna stress it out too much like right figuring out what's best for you and fending those matches you have to be willing to fail at that you have to be willing to give it a try so those are the things i think about when i read that article yeah like you say when you when you talk about that you literally start touching into you know different things because for a lot of people they have different levels of friendships Mm -hmm. you know for some people i can you know speak for myself i have some people i go well oh that's the buddy i go to the movies with oh that's the Mm -hmm. buddy i go walking with oh that's the buddy you know we do this with we do that with and we're still friends it's just different spots for different people because like you say you have to adjust the friendship according to the people too yeah absolutely so all right let's uh move on into some other stuff uh let's see maybe we do some um See, is any fucking with black people stuff I feel like talking about? Yeah, yeah, we got some fucking with black people we can do. Uh, we pull up the fucking with black people song. We're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them people because they black. We're just fucking with them black people. We're just fucking with them blacks. We're just fucking with fucking with black people. Hey. 
who, who, hey, who you are. You are. That's right. Show is foggy. Starbucks worker suspended over alleged monkey label on a drink. I don't know if there's an article or just playing. Um, this happened in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, at the Starbucks, y'all. You know, we love, we love the we love the pumpkin spice, but we don't love the racism. I like the right? strawberry frappuccino. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can play the volume. Let's see. That's how impeccable brands, the company that op- an honest mistake. That's how impeccable brands, the company that operates the Starbucks in Annapolis Mall, explains why an employee entered Monkey where Monique Pugh's name should have been. If you didn't hear my name, you should have said, excuse me, can you repeat yourself? Not once did she do that. She she labeled me what she wanted to label me. As the only Shout black out woman to in the- social media. Sometimes I think about the what it must have felt like back in the day before social media, you know, the 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> no. But sometimes I think about like way back in the day, like before even like before the turn the of the century. <laughs> yeah. Or well, just like when black people used to have to deal with this kind of shit. And it just, you know what you did? You went home and you told your wife or your husband or your friend and y'all talk about your little circles. and yeah your family but you but you didn't you weren't able to pick up your phone turn the camera on post it on tiktok and then if enough people seen it and got outraged you was on the news that night like man shout out to that social media that is one good thing we don't talk about right the shop at the time pew believes the incident was racially motivated since the story first aired we have heard from a starbucks spokesperson and from the CEO of Impeccable Brands, a Starbucks licensee and operator of the store. In a letter, they told Pew that they have suspended the employee involved, pending further investigation, and apologized. Their message reads in part, quote, We believe following our initial investigation that the label was made in error. However, this is not the warm and welcoming experience we want to create for our customers, and we are actively working to ensure this does not happen again. We are exploring other opportunities to better train our staff in understanding cultural and racial sensitivities to ensure all future interactions are welcoming okay, and inclusive. It's a popular opinion and a hot take, but man, I'd be feeling bad for these big ass companies when one person do something racist. Cause now you gotta lie. Like, oh, we gotta train everybody with sensitivity. It was one racist. We didn't know they was gonna be racist. They should just be fired and that should be the end of it. I also love the idea of suspension, like it's like it's Kyrie Irving. Like we suspended them five games, and uh, it could be more, but they need to feed. Yeah, ain't y'all ain't y'all fighting against Union? You ain't got no Union to fight against. Fire them. Yeah, like why? Why is this even? And I know that sounds cold to be honest, to just be like fire a motherfucker. But I mean, this seemed pretty pretty cut and dry to me. Right. Maybe, well, Nobody made a mistake. It was in a bitch. You put monkey in there here. Yeah. Like what's going to be the explanation that would even be plausible for you to be like, Oh, okay. You know what? It shit happens. Y'all serve people all day. Who else did you call the motherfucking monkey? Kiss my ass. Like I thought she said her name was monkey. I said, what's your name? She's Oh wait, isn't her name Monique? Hold on. Let me see. What was her name? Monique Pugh. Maybe she thought like she said her name was monkey oh my god because then what do you do ask her again ma'am could you repeat that oh my god Mm-mm. i figured it out Mm-mm. i solved the fucking mystery Mm-mm. she thought she said her name was monkey for real Mm-mm. Well, boy, is that egg on your face? Because I don't even know what I'd do if I... If a black person said their name was Monkey, I'd be scared to ask them to say it back. I'd be like, I don't want to say If they don't know it's racist, I'm not going to tell them. I want to be the first motherfucker to let them know. What was your initial thought when you got this apology? That it was bogus. And the fact that they keep saying that it was an honest mistake so now it's an honest mistake and a labeling error to say that you're taking the necessary steps to make sure that that word isn't put on any more customers' drinks. It's like, what were you doing before? 
A Starbucks spokesperson whoa, whoa, whoa. made what sure to differentiate. His monkey? And now it ain't in the system because Monique here done went overboard and made sure it's not in the Starbucks system ever. That's that's crazy. I might want my shit to be named Monkey. Between a Starbucks operated store and a licensed store. But Pew says there should not be a difference in how you were treated. It's triggering because it's basically just like, okay, this occurred in our store, but we're wiping our hands clean. Maybe corporate does need to get involved. Carl Willis, 7 News. Yeah, and what kills me, a lot mm -hmm. of them do this when it comes in between the corporate and franchisees. Bitch, when I go, I see fucking McDonald's. I don't know the goddamn difference. So when I go to a Starbucks, it's motherfucking Starbucks. Like as a customer, I don't know if you're a franchisee or not a franchisee. That don't fucking matter to me. Yeah, uh, I hear what you said, but we're not going to get to the bottom of the corporate infrastructure and franchisees today. Um, that Like, th that's just how it, that's unfortunate, but that's how it is. Like, mm -hmm. basically, um, Starbucks TM or whatever the fuck got to take back the franchisee license from this one company because it's one person misheard somebody and put this shit on the label that's what it seems like would be the reaction that would satisfy people here and i think that would be actually an overreaction yes yes but 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 yeah but i can see the person getting mad going i just see starbucks like of course i mean but yeah. they was mad they they was mad so they don't they ain't nobody <laughs> over, we're not overdoing <laughs> what franchisees like get the fuck out of here no i'm can't. sorry you had a bad experience but come on man customer not always right anyway zero to 100 what would you get this 100 don't call me no motherfucking monkey ask me clarify if you heard wrong ask me again clarify and this is not trying to be fun out of y'all top this is what happened y'all be doing these cute ass shit when y'all be like oh let me mispronounce your name no bitch ask me ask people to spell their names and shit like y'all they do that shit thinking it's cute somebody put monkey in there ha 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 jokes on you the person got mad it's not funny no more yeah i don't i, I i'm not I, I get this like a 25 is is not making me mad at all. I really think it was an honest mistake. Um, and unless they got a pattern of this at this store or that employee got something that they got on them, I, I think that person really thought she said her name was Monkey, put it in the system, did not understand how, like, that it was got to turn into, you know, such a racial connotation. Um, and I know I'm sensitive to that kind of shit. I remember my friend, a white guy, had a child, white kid, and um, he would call her little monkey and his little monkey and all this shit. And I would tense up every time I heard it, even though it's white people talking to a white kid and there's no racial connotation to the shit. So I would be like, oh my God, this is how can you keep saying this kid is a monkey? And but it's not racial to them, right? Because they don't, they're not thinking like me and you. So I don't, you know, I think, and this is one of the issues with social media and shit too, and how stories are presented to us. We always assume the worst. Like this person decided I'm just going to randomly be racist, get found out on purpose. Cause it's not like the label was on the cup. It wasn't like that thing where you get a receipt from like IHOP right. and, and they have like something they put racist in the background, like four niggers. And then you get your bill and be like, what the fuck is four niggas doing on my bill? I think they really thought she said her name was Monkey and they fucked up in that they should have probably asked her to clarify. Of course, we're only asking her to clarify because she's black. Let's keep that in mind, which is also a racial thing. <laughs> like, it's like, cause it's like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Monique is like, or you, or you thought she said Monkey. So you, hear, uh, can you say that again? What? I said, I said Monique. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Thank God. Like, that could have been it, too. But I, I don't, I found it to be more of a mistake than a intentional racist thing. So, yeah, just 25. It's not that big a deal to me. Um, Let's go to the next one. Uh, How about this one? Lizzo denies she makes mu music for a white audience as she covers Vanity Fair. Well, they've been getting at that woman, ain't you? For years. Yes, and she's been responding. That's it's always been, I always thought it was weirdly anti-black when they did that to her. I mm -hmm. I remember when we covered it on the show when Ari Lennox was mad that Lizzo won a Soul Train Award mm -hmm. and tried to be like the, and like definitely took shots at Lizzo saying she makes white music or some shit. Right. And I was like, I'm a fan of Lizzo's music. Me it sounds black to me. What the fuck? Like, 
Yeah, she got a gorgeous. Voice. I don't listen to that and go, "This is a white lady singing." Like, why are y'all even coming for her? And why is it always got to be like that? Yeah, because she crossed over, and a lot of p- our favorite artists cross over, and we they still niggas. Right. So, um, yeah, I I think it's sad that years later she got to address it. But she said, this is uh, probably the biggest criticism I've received. It's such a critical conversation when it comes to black artists. When black people see a lot of white people in the audience, they think, well, this isn't for me. This is for them. The thing is, when a black artist reaches a certain level of popularity, it's going to be a predominantly white crowd. She continued to explain, I'm not making music for white people. I'm a black woman. I'm making music for my black black experience. Um, She says, uh, she creates music for me to heal myself from the experience we call life. Um... So I'm making music for that girl right there who looks like me, who grew up in the city where she has, she was underappreciated and picked on and made to feel unbeautiful. Uh, She says, am I doing that? Yes. Clapping back at her critics, she said, it blows my mind when people say I'm not making music from a black perspective. How could I not do that as a black artist? Yeah. And I think there are some artists where you feel like or see them kind of de-racifying their music. Mm-hmm. I don't think she does that. Um, I'm not saying it's a phenomenon that never happens. I remember listening to like the Black Eyed Peas and they definitely made a switch of like, mm-hmm. we're going to stay as far away from anything racial, make all this money, and we just going to be, you know, talking about whatever the fuck, but definitely nothing too serious. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I think a lot of times those artists end up regretting that shit and coming back in the later years, like, nah, we we black. But um, I don't think Lizzo's done that. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think the shoe doesn't fit with her. And a lot of that was people working backwards with either disrespecting her because they liked another artist better mm-hmm. or simply being like, if I see white people enjoying something, it must be something wrong with it. Anyway, all right, zero to 100. I can see that. Uh... I guess a 25 because this sounds like an ongoing battle. And you know what? I'm I'm a bump this up to a 75. Okay. And the reason why is because as somebody who likes music, it's very fresh. It could be frustrating for me to see artists kind of go and you know, black people support them and then they cross over. And black people still support them, but you have a percentage to go the second white people eyes are on you, they change. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you, you only made miss white people. And you go, well, I actually made music for everybody, you know, and y'all everybody. But, you know, for some reason, once white eyes get on me and I blow up and I, and I you know, and, and I'm famous, all of a sudden I've changed. Cause I think a lot of that comes from white supremacy, mm-hmm. you know, for a lot of us, we feel like you're not ours anymore once you cross over to whiteness. And, you know, for some artists, that's true. For some artists, that's not. Right. But people just automatically just throw and make that assumption just for various different reasons. And now that really bothers me, particularly uh, when it comes to uh, black women, because I'm a black woman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sound like she's had a black ass experience and she's singing these things and we are, you know, and just because I'm black, you know, I could sing about rainbows and lollipops and, you know, things that's quote unquote race neutral. It don't mean I'm not black and it don't mean I'm not a nigga, you know, but for some reason, people just claim once you cross over, all of a sudden you quote unquote sold out or whatever it may be. And it's not for every artist and not for all artists, but it just bothers me particularly once I see this happen and, and to see artists get quote unquote consistently attacked like that. Yeah, I think it by it's definitely a 75 for me as well. I think a lot of times is Lizzo just don't really be bothering nobody, and mm-hmm. yet she is so much at the center of criticism in so many different ways from so many different groups, and all of it reeks of insecurity of that group, whether it's people that have you know their the phobias around people being fat, whether it's people that don't like black women, whether it's people that um you know, like like uh, black people that that think she's somehow catering to white folks or something. Mm-hmm. It just seems like it's always some shit where it's, and she doesn't really seem to to want to court this shit. Like mm-hmm. she doesn't seem to be trying to be controversial in a lot of ways. I think I get being. I think you know you could argue she was being provocative 
with the, the the clothes she wore to the Lakers game, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I think she meant to be provocative in that right. case. Right, that was the whole point. But it, to me, no more provocative than you know, Madonna tongue kissing Britney Spears at a fucking you know, like like or, or a, share. Yeah, yeah, like like nothing that required the level of hate and vitriol that comes from it, mm -hmm. like normally people just be like that's weird or you're being annoying or you're doing too much it with her it just turns into some other discussion that becomes like so fucking charged you know and so i hate that she has to deal with it mm -hmm. you know what i mean because it's like in addition to like tucker carlson talking shit about her she also got niggas talking shit because ari lennox didn't win an award as if there's no fucking way to be a fan of Ari Lennox and Lizzo. Right. Some, one of these black women got to go. It can only be, be one. one. Right. People you are know? people are fans of, of, of multiple different artists that sings about a, 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 an array of different things across, you know, across the board and all that types of stuff. Yeah. So I guess it got to her, and that that's the part that that pisses me off is mm -hmm. she even got to fucking, you know, address this bullshit because. We've seen all these artists, especially these young black women on social media, where it the shit gets to them. It gets yes. back to them. They hear it. People think because we're so uh, not insecure. What's the word? We're so jealous. We're so jealous and envious of these people's positions in society and their money and their shit that we just think those things insulate you from your mental health. Like, right? Hey, you, you're famous. Don't you got the Grammy, didn't you? You know, and it's like. And clearly, when this person is in this interview, you're hearing the Grammy doesn't stop me from having emotions. It doesn't validate me the way you think it would, person that's never won a Grammy and not been the center of attention in this type of way. Like, it, it makes me feel a way. And I think especially with Black people, most of the time we want some connection to each other. And so to take away that connection or to act like someone doesn't want it, it's a it's one of the most hurtful things you can do to a black person. Mm -hmm. And I think you know she had to purpose. go through that. Right. Um, all right, let's uh wrap this bad boy up with some uh some guess the race. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 That's right. It's guess the race time. The game we go around the globe, find different articles, and guess the race of the people involved. Uh, Karen mm -hmm. plays along. She is racist. <laughs> and then the chat room plays along, and they are racist. And not in the, like, unintentional Starbucks way where you thought someone said monkey, but their name was Monique. I'm talking about these niggas racist for real. And we'll be calling people monkey and they mean it. <laughs> but had a nerd to be in the chat mad at me because I said uh it was just a 25. I think the person actually made a mistake. And meanwhile, they slathering at the motherfucking mouth to call somebody a moon cricket right the fuck now. Boy, I swear to God, these people. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Police <laughs> Police identify third suspect in a scheme to defraud the vets not the vets the va yeah the vets you know the the veterans uh the army i assume mm -hmm. not the like vets of like treating dogs mm -hmm. shreveport louisiana shreveport have issued shreveport police have issued an arrest warrant for a third person accused in a scheme of defraud to defraud veterans out of more than a million dollars oh eric loud is wanted on 58 counts of identity theft. 58? Yeah, damn. Arrest warrants have been issued Monday following further investigation that led to the arrest of two women last week. Uh, the arrest last month was Zar Raja Watkins, 21, who's accused of using her position at a job at Teleperformance to gain access to the victim's USAA bank account information. She allegedly sold the account information to Destain Glass. Destain Glass? Uh, they're, they're in the same place as the, pi the Pirate Monkey. Not the Pirate Monkey. Lord pirate Monkey. Ship? Yeah, Pirate Monkey. I'm wow. Missing. Wow, did you just say monkey by accident, you <laughs> fucking racist? You know I'm right here. <laughs> oh, my God. You just called me a monkey. No. Knowing I'm black. No. And I'm doing a pot. You must have done it on 
on purpose. Dracoris, you fired. The plant room is fired. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm got. I'm calling the news. I'm calling the goddamn news. Black man. This is why black men don't have no friends. <laughs> Can't even do a podcast with his own wife without somebody calling him <laughs> a monkey. Apparently not. It's a microaggression, and you meant that shit. I, 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 since you said I did, yeah. I, I want did. the franchise to come down here and take away your license. Well, this franchise is broke, my nigga. Uh, <laughs> this franchise is is is, is employee of one. The but yeah, the stained glass. That sounds like what's in the church. <laughs> it is doesn't it the stained glass 21 and the others who police said use a number of taxes defraud account holders of more than one million dollars glass reportedly used the money to buy a home expensive cars and lavish items oh shit Watkins is charged with 175 counts of identity theft 175 and Glass is charged with 65 counts of identity theft. Shreveport police asked anyone with information on the whereabouts of Mr. Eric Loud to contact them. Now, they are all the same race. Karen, guess the race. What are their names? Okay. Like, do you have them? The Stained Glass. <laughs> Not sure how that one went over your head. Eric Loud and Zaraja Watkins. Give Karen some time with this one. Okay, she decided black. All right. Something about those names, I guess. Uh, Alasha says, this is nigga shenanigans. Tony says, three-time employee of the month at Power Ship <laughs> Shipping White. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your, your services, black. These some monkeys. <laughs> With a QUI, uh, Negroes, going, gang activity, black. Watkins is a nigga name if I ever heard one. Uh, those sound like black names on the monkey pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> Their names equal Jigaboo. Three blacks, black, three port. I'm going to go black. Colored all them Negroes plus three port. Correct answer is, and I think the vast majority of y'all said black. You got it right. <laughs> One person said white, though. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, that's his picture. And then I knew you notice know a black story because if you Google the women's names, their picture comes up from uh if I'm not mistaken, the image search says from Lipstick Alley. Oh so, no. Yeah, yeah. So they made the lipstick alley. Yeah. So at least one of one of the pictures. I, maybe I had maybe it was uh the other one with the stained glass, but this is them. Uh so yeah, they they uh going to jail. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to the next one. So far, Karen is one and one. Uh, I mean one and zero. A man was arrested at the family monopoly game turns violent. Oh shit. This this did somebody uh have a bullet walk? Yeah, he must have all the all the all the deep blues. Okay. They had the whole corner. You must not did they, did they have the jail too? I'm waiting till you're done. Keep going. Oh, okay. You're going to name say, all of them. Go ahead. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. The power place in the water company. <laughs> all the railroad tracks. Somebody got mad and turned all that shit over. You cheating. Don't be putting no more houses on that. <laughs> the Tulsa Police Department arrested a man Saturday night after they say a family game Monopoly turned violent. Monopoly is the worst game for a family. Mm-hmm. It's honestly the game. Only people don't that have are, no time limit. The only people that are good at it are assholes. It is yeah, I'm turning not- you into a violent rent landlord motherfucker. Ah! Such a terrible guy. Uh, officers were called to a shots fired near a uh, Baltic place and uh, <laughs> Mediterranean Avenue. Yes! <laughs> um, uh, at, near Admiral and Mingo just before 6.30 p.m. The call identified the suspects as John Armstrong saying he chased her down and fired a shot at her and her father. <gasps> this sounds like this was on Thanksgiving. Holy so shit! So y'all broke out the board games instead of just watching the Cowboys like every other family. Right. Um, y'all the, didn't. You, I'm about to say play Uno, but shit, y'all might shoot yeah. each other over the stacking. Oh, nah, we good. Stabbed. 
When police arrived, they immediately took Armstrong into custody. Investigators learned the family had been drinking alcohol and playing Monopoly when a fight broke out between Armstrong and his stepfather. After knocking over the board, the game board, and turning over the furniture, they were told to take the fight outside. Armstrong, I was like, y'all ain't gonna be, y'all ain't gonna be turning on my goddamn turkey dinner. I'm up all night making this motherfucking dress and take that shit outside. They probably was just mad they hadn't, the food wasn't ready and it was 8.30 at night. At night? And Uh, they still hadn't ate shit? It was 6.30, they still hadn't ate and then they they came out in the form of Monopoly. Angry Monopoly on Thanksgiving, just no way to go out. Mm -mm. Armstrong pulled out the gun after getting a cut in the head. Well, how do you get a cut in the head? That seemed relevant. Ah. Somebody must have threw the thimble at his ass or something. Ah. Uh, He chased his stepfather and stepsister down the street pointing the gun at them. Uh, he told police he fired one shot at the ground. Officers did not find the gun. They believe he hid it in the house before surrendering. Mm. Uh, the uh, Armstrong was arrested and uh, told to, and put booked into the Tulsa County Jail. He did not pass go. He did not collect $200. No, he did not. So he just he tried to roll uh he tried to roll doubles to get out but mm-hmm. so far he's still work. there uh, <laughs> all right karen guess the race oh black karen's going black for john armstrong let's see what y'all believe in the chat uh i don't think they were sure it was like they was drinking hennessy mm-hmm. caucasian calamity a white will shoot you dead over some land if it's monopoly land Tulsa Watchman St. Charles Place equal black. A typical colonizer white. Parkway Place white. Um, like a lot of whites going on in the guesses here. Chance Carr says nigga to jail. Ah! <laughs> nigga go to jail. Uh, he landed on the on the free parking and uh, they had some money for him to get his bail. But uh I'm gonna go white. So a lot of people going white. I noticed we're getting less guesses as people trying to prove they're not as racist as Starbucks. Nigga, it's not working. <laughs> I see y'all. Uh, country ass white colonizers. The correct answer is white. Now I'm just kidding. It's black, Karen. You got it right. Yay! <laughs> All these niggas said white. I, I said been white shocked. and Karen, you stuck, you stood your ground. You know what, call class. Mm-hmm. You stood your ground. I was, I was like, that sounds like some nigga shit. And all of them missed it. <laughs> now I don't know why his mugshot is giving me Jesse Smollett vibes. But Ain't it though? Tell the truth. Yeah, that was my jam. Tell the truth. Yeah, that's terrible. But uh, yeah. Shooting over Monopoly. You hate to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing tears a, the family apart like Monopoly. Like Monopoly, Uno, Dominoes, right. and, and Spades. In any of them games. Right. Just, just don't play them. Don't play them for money and don't play it seriously. Never play them hungry. Oh, hungry? All yeah. right. Let's get Somebody to a ton of a Domino's table. the bonus round. Karen's two for two. Yay! I how can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. It's time to Gold, gold chain wearing fried chicken and biscuit eating monkey eating baboon big guy fast running high jumping spear chucking 360 degree basketball. All right. Charles Wideneck McDowell. Not Wideneck! Who rocketed to social media fame after an arrest in 2018, was arrested again on Sunday and booked in the Escambia County Jail. Charles Dion McDowell faces two charges, one for aggravated stalking and another for withholding support for a child or a spouse. He was arrested in 2018 for a number of charges, including fleeing the leading police and drug charges related to meth, cocaine, and marijuana. Since his earlier arrest and rise to fame, he's become part of the Shrimp Gang, a collection of online celebrities. He's recorded a music video with fellow neck meme star Daddy Long Neck. Ah, not Daddy Long Neck. Guess the race. Ah, ah, I'm gonna go white. 
Cam's going white. He's on some white book country for shit. Charles Wide Neck McDowell. Uh, let's see what the chat room believes. Now you said June bug, gotta say black. Uh, so oh, uh, looks like a lot of people already know Kardashian looking neck black. Uh, a necka, it's a b, thick ass neck nigga black nigra. Uh, well, Karen, the correct answer is I don't know how you missed it, but you did. It is black. <laughs> Shit, y'all weren't lying. <laughs> it's net made like a motherfucking tree trunk. The hell is this? Oh my, his neck is bigger than his head. What is happening? <laughs> oh, I was not expecting that. Some people got it right. <laughs> yeah, when I saw this, I was like, man, he got in trouble 2018. He got in trouble this year. What's he gonna do next? <laughs> Oh, nobody is made like that. Maybe they'll let him go if he just gives them a full-throated apology. <laughs> just saying. Um, he can always with them small ears. He can also he can always say he didn't hear him. I mean, sure. I just think he got to hold his head up. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of neck. Yes, that is. You know, he got all the jokes, right? Oh man. Um, all right, let's get to the final thing. Let's do some sword ratchetness and get out of here. Sword ratchetness. We go around the globe and we find different articles about the scourge of sword crimes in the world. Mm -hmm. And we try to spread awareness on our platform because it's a very dangerous, underreported, under uh resourced area of crime in, in America. And it's it's sad that we don't talk about it, you know. Um all right, let's talk about it. Call a, a man behaved like a character from Joker film before a samurai sword attack. A Sydney real estate uh, agent snorted a massive line of cocaine with a rolled up bank note and behaved like a character from the Joker film in the moments before he elbowed one woman to the face and attacked another with a samurai sword. Oh, damn. He, he really thought he was in Gotham City, didn't he? <laughs> Carl Howard. 46 is facing a judge alone trial in NSW district court accused of violent attack at his home in Annadale in the city's inner West in the early hours of February 8th, 2021. Laughing when they was talking to him and shit. Like the hell is this? <laughs> he said, where did they get a load of me? Uh, he has <laughs> pleaded not guilty to causing grievously grievous bodily harm with intent to murder and causing grievous bodily harm with intent. He offered Holy a, shit, then he was like, why so serious? And then just started attacking everybody. He offered guilty pleas for to two lesser charges, assault, occasioning actually bodily harm and recklessly causing grievous body harm and prosecutors rejected those. On Friday, I would have Judge done. Anthony Townsend noted that the acts carried out by Howard were not in dispute with the sole issue of the trial being his intent at the time. In a statement tended to the court on Friday, a woman described being petrified and running for her life after watching him swing the samurai sword at her friend. Right. The man said she and her friend had taken cocaine and drunk alcohol with Howard before gathering at his home. And then he started behaving like a little boy with a high-pitched voice as he skipped and ran. He said, you want to see how I got these scars? Um, no, I actually don't. I don't want to see how you got those scars. She said Howard grabbed a bag of cocaine. A bag? How much cocaine did y'all have? Uh, poured it onto the plate on the kitchen bench, snorted a massive line of cocaine using the note of money before he tried to kiss her friend who looked back toward me in a spiteful, evil 
and then he looked back toward me in a spiteful, evil manner. Carl uh, continued skipping and laughing again and said something to, to me like, I need to kill you. You need to die. He reminded me of a scene out of the movie The Joker as he said it with a smile on his face and laughed and sang a child's song. Oh, what this really means, and this is sad news for a friend of the show, listener, J.L. Covan. But I, I got to say, last couple years, uh, unfortunately, uh, this version of the Joker has surpassed Heath Ledger's version of the Joker in Dark Knight. Once again, making it not the best comic book movie of all time. Because if you can be surpassed by that bullshit, and now people are dressing like this asshole and doing crimes, <laughs> and they saying the Joker, not the Dark Knight, the definitive portrayal of the Joker. I mean, how much has that movie fallen off to people in such a short period of time? <laughs> I, and I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I'm, I'm heartbroken as JL, honestly. <laughs> you know, not, you know, maybe not as heartbroken. He thinks it's better than, like, Black Panther and, and sex. But to me, I think uh, <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest movies of all time, period, up there with Black Panther. And it's sad to know that this version of fucking The Joker is the new fucking get dressed up and do crimes. God. That's not good. He rushed towards my friend as she crouched down to protect herself. Carl lifted the sword above his shoulder, above his shoulder height, before quickly swinging the sword down onto her body. As she screamed out, "No!" In absolute panic and fear, the force of him hitting her with the sword made me think he, she was dead. Carl Whoa. then brought the sword up above his shoulder with his focus on me, like I wasn't even in the room. I rushed toward the top of the stairs, running for my life. Both women managed to flee, receiving help from neighbors. Uh, the CCTV played to the court and Howard could be seen climbing onto the tray of a youth park at the side of the road and lying on his back as a police car drove past before climbing out and stumbling on the road he was arrested nearby. Police body cam video showed him writhing on the ground making growling noises. Uh, they said the guys have some sort of psychotic episode. In a statement, one of the arresting officers described Howard as gritting his teeth, biting his lips, yelling out nonsensical remarks, and repeatedly saying, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. Uh, speaking of police, right from mind, my, in a bag of cocaine, he just snorted, of course he's not in his right mind. Right. Um, and if he would have done the superior Joker, he would have at least had some better lines. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. He would have been like, Gordon and... and Batman, they're schemers, you know. Uh, speaking to the police from a hospital bed, Howard asked if the women were okay and then sobbed, holding his hand on his head and said, I don't know what happened. Oh, God, fuck, it's crazy. I'm just really worried about them. Uh, he later told a forensic psychiatrist he'd been awake for seven days straight. Leading up to the incident, drinking alcohol and taking up to five grams of cocaine a day. Five grams. I don't know how much that is, but that should sound like a lot a day. He went through 80 grams in 15 days, racking <gasps> up $24,000 of debt of, of, of cocaine money used to buy cocaine. Had to be a better way for me to say that. Dr. Olav Nielsen opined that Howard was experiencing toxic delirium from continuous use of a very large quantities of cocaine. You don't say. And lack of sleep and was most likely incapable of appreciating that what he was doing was wrong. What if that's how what we find out really motivated the Joker? Just lots of cocaine. Uh, uh, <laughs> all of the drugs. All of the drugs. <laughs> like, like, how did he get powers? Oh, he don't have powers. Mm -mm. He just got that white girl, okay? Mm -hmm. That white girl got him up. <laughs> like, he just... He Wide just, eyed and bushy tailed, apparently. He just does a line, and then that's that's how... He, that, that's, that's his, his motivation, power. yeah. Batman can be defeated by a fucking hype. All right, y'all, that's it. We'll be back uh, probably next week sometime. We're going to take the rest of this week off. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, as always, sign up for our Black Friday special. If you have any questions, email me to blackoutters at gmail.com. I'm getting your emails. I'm fielding them now. I'm working on them. And I appreciate y'all that do that. Until next time, I love you. I love you, too. Mwah. Mwah. Bye, everybody. It is spies with the second, third. The third. third the third, yeah. Bye, everybody. Y'all have a good one. I know y'all monkeys uh, are racist. <laughs> uh, so y'all do that. All right. Talk to you little monkeys later. Bye. Oh, Lord.